Hi everyone, Kurt with Hypnodyne. Today we're going to take a look at this SpO2 nasal airflow sensor uh, for ZMAX. Um, I'll break this down into parts. First I'm going to show you how to wear it on your head. Then perhaps I'll add a short screencast where you can see the signal and what kind of signals the, the sensor produces. Um, the sensor looks like this. You can see that it's very very small, particularly the connector and the hooks. And the reason for the connector being that small is that ZMAX itself is extremely small, so the port into which you plug the connector also needs to be really, really small. In fact, it's, it was so difficult to make a port this small that I went ahead and filed a patent on it because it's not something that you can buy uh, on the market. By contrast, you look at the USB connector, it seems huge. The SpO2 connector is that um, black rectangle that's just next to uh, the USB port. Uh, on the video, I think it's gonna show up on the right side. Um, so first of all, how to put it on. Um, to do a demo, I'm going to add an electrode patch to ZMAX, first of all, as you're familiar with, so you can see the whole setup. So let's say you start from this uh, position. The sensor has a correct side and an incorrect side. The connector itself does not prevent the user from plugging it in the wrong way because when it's this small there's no space for mechanical parts and you know having it be asymmetrical but that's fine because there's a there's a cross on one side of the sensor this this main body part i'm not sure it's going to show up on the video but on one side there's a cross and on the other side there's an arrow and now if you hold the uh, sensor uh, this way you will see that it has hooks the hooks clearly need to get into your nostrils so the, the hooks will be facing towards your face. And when, when that is true, then the uh, part of the sensor with the arrow will be facing towards uh, the outside that is away from your face. So when you mount it, you must be careful to align them correctly because if not, it will, it will not like it at all. Uh, but you should uh, position this so that it's, uh, that it's the right side with respect to your face. And then uh, take the uh, SpO2 sensor in such a way that you're looking at the side with the X. And then you find the port. So I turn it around to find the port. And these four pins on the sensor need to go into the four holes on the receptacle and the connector. Um, make sure the pins are properly aligned and don't use force to just try to shove it in. You have to look at the holes while it's going in. The purpose of having it so small is the following. You know, ZMAX is, a, is not like a PSG system. It's something that is supposed to give people the ability to monitor their sleep on an ongoing basis. So the SpO2 sensor for ZMAX cannot be that much more uncomfortable than simply ZMAX itself. So the design criterion for which it's optimized is simply size. It should not bother you once it's on the face. To achieve that, we pay a small price in terms of having it be a little bit not so simple to, to apply. But once it's applied, then it will not bother you as you sleep, or at least it will bother you much less than, than other stuff that you could use. So this is where you start from. Now it's plugged in. Uh, possibly after you've plugged it in, you might want to um, switch it on to confirm that it's working properly. And in this case, I'm pretty sure that this is not charged. So it's not gonna do that. So I'm gonna grab one that is charged. And the way that you make sure that it's working is by plugging it in the right way. You will notice that the uh, blue light is blinking, which it always does when it's switched off. So make sure it's switched off before you plug it in. Then, as I said, you find the receptacle, make sure the pins are aligned and put it in very gently. And now it's in this condition. Uh, the fact that the blue light is still blinking indicates that there hasn't been a short circuit. You haven't plugged the sensor in the wrong way. So everything is good to go at this point. So now to confirm that it's working, I simply switch this on. And now to actually check that it's working, it needs to be transmitting in wireless mode because otherwise at this point it's not even sampling. It's just in standby, as you can see from the lights. So there's two ways to take it out of standby. If you've got the HD, recording, uh, HD recorder running, it will do that for you. Uh, otherwise, for simplicity, you can just push the middle black key and it will set it to, to, uh, to, uh, to transmission mode. Now, when this happens and the SpO2 sensor is plugged in, you will see a red light on the sensor itself. 
I'll try to hold it still so you can see. Okay, so the fact that the red light is switching on and blinking very, very fast, that indicates that it's functioning correctly. So now I'm going to switch it off again back to wearing. Make sure you always switch it on and off. Um, make sure you always switch it off when inserting or removing the SpO2 sensor. And so I, I reapply my electrode here so we have the full setup. Now to put it on, you have to insert these hooks into your nostrils. The most important part here is the following. These hooks are not meant to be flattened or pried open. The hooks should slide inside your nostril by pushing from the bottom. So I'm going to do that now to demonstrate. One, and find the other one, push it from the bottom, holding the nose. That's it. It's in. Okay? So what you don't want to do, and if you lend it out to a patient, you must make sure that they don't think that they can actually open this because it will break. Um, it's very, very small, as you can see. It's just barely big enough to, to get into your nose. There are other nasal sensors that I've seen that are this big, so they're much less comfortable once you wear them. Again, here, we're making a small compromise in terms of ease of application so that once it's on, then it won't bother you too much. So I'm going to do it again. One and two. All right. So now you see how it's made so that it's going to be for most people a little bit longer. That is to accommodate different uh, face sizes. This doesn't mean now that you're going to apply Z-Max right here at the top of the head because that's, well, in my case, it's not flat enough. So that's not good. You're going to apply exactly where it would normally go if you hadn't had the nasal sensor connected. That is right here. Okay. And this thing is going to bend a little bit. Now, to test it, you don't need to do anything. Just, just switch it on. And then you're going to have HD recorder working and it's going to show you the nice uh, nasal airflow signal and the SpO2 signal. But when you want to actually set up a patient to sleep a whole night on it, uh, with it rather, uh, then you might want to shorten these uh, flat cables. And that's, that's easily done by folding them and applying a piece of tape. And once the tape is on, uh, that, that's, your, that's your correct size, so you don't have to remove it ever again or, or do it again. But of course, you, wanna, you don't want to mess with it when it's on your face. You want to just simply measure and then figure out by how much it needs to be shortened. And sometimes uh, the whole thing needs to be bent about halfway through to completely shorten it. The idea here, I mean, it's going to work like this, right? But the only problem is that to accommodate many face sizes, this is a little bit longer. And so if the patient turns around in bed, it's going to move the sensor, right? So that's not good. You want to keep it as close and flat on the face as possible so that while the person is breathing, perhaps with their face against the pillow, and uh, as the person is moving around, this doesn't get dislocated. Or you know, another thing that could easily happen is that if you leave this hanging in front of you, it will rhythmically, with your breathing rhythm, it's going to hit against the pillow, and that's going to produce some waveform that's not really good. So now it's on my face, so it's not in a condition where I can actually show you how to shorten it, but you can imagine this flat cable being bent in half, okay, like this, and then you apply some tape to shorten it, and that's it. Now, the cool thing about this sensor is that at this point, it's very, very small. It's completely adherent to your face. And so as you move around, it's not going to be a blocking thing that, that creates an obstacle to your sleep or that deteriorates the quality of your sleep, okay? So this was the design optimization. Again, don't leave it like this because you're seeing already that it has created an angle here and it's going to change during sleep. So you really want to have it so that it sticks uh, flat against your face, okay? So this is how you use the nasal sensor. Remember, when you remove it, remove first the headband, hold it like this, pull down on the hooks without prying them open. Now switch off the device, very important, and then remove the nasal sensor, and you're done. So now this can be used on different people if you either sterilize it. If you sterilize it, you must use very, very pure alcohol. The alcohol that they would sell at the convenience store or the supermarket is not good enough. It has to be 99 point something percent pure ethanol or isopropyl alcohol. And in that case, you can just dip it in. Um, or otherwise, you can apply some uh, transparent wrapping. Anything that's transparent, um, as long as you don't hide the part at the back. I'm going to show you where the... Uh, 
temperature sensing portion is that measures the airflow. It's on the outside of the hook. The parts on the inside that are in contact with the actual nose, that is just an optical component. Anything transparent that you can fit in between that and the nose will not alter the functioning. Uh, if you do experiment, of course, you can check it against the HD recorder signal and verify that everything is working properly. But the easiest way is just to get pure alcohol and just dip it in and then you can reuse it if you need to use a single sensor on multiple people. As long as you treat it with care, you don't try to open the hooks, as long as you don't bend these pins. Again, this this had to be something that was so small that it wouldn't make Zmax any bigger. And so this this is, of course, you know, when it's not inserted, it's quite fragile. Don't bend the pins. Once it's inserted, there's no problem. It's protected by uh, by by being inserted and then the Zmax itself, the, the plastic case of Zmax. Okay, so this is what the SpO2 sensor looks like. And now we're going to switch to looking at what the signal produced by the sensor looks like in the uh, software platform.